Hello YouTube, thank you for watching. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to change the oil on a Porsche 911. I have a 997 Carrera S and it's one of the easiest cars that I've ever changed the oil on. If you find this video useful or even mildly entertaining, please like and subscribe. Thank you. I know there are probably 200 videos out there on how to do this, and I've watched a number of them. But if you've ever watched any of my how-to videos, you will know that I take you step by step, with good camera angles, no vague images, no crappy video or bad audio. The all needed changing on my car, so I thought, what the heck, I'll film it. I know there are some change your oil in 9 seconds using a paper clip and some sturdy bits of wood, no special tools needed, videos out there, shot on an iPhone that gives you motion sickness to watch, but that's not how I work. In a previous work life I was an engineer, so I like to do things well using the right equipment. I know a person can cut corners on anything, it's just not the way I like to do things. Anyway. If you've never done anything like this before, and you're worried, especially because it's your beloved Porsche, don't be. Anybody can do this. Take your time, follow along, and you'll be fine. You really can do this yourself, and save yourself hundreds of dollars each time. I believe one of the success factors in doing anything yourself is good preparation and using the right tools. Changing the oil is a really simple thing to do on this car. If you're going to do this yourself, and you should, why risk your gorgeous car because you didn't want to spend a hundred dollars on getting the right kit? The equipment costs will pay for themselves the first time you use them, and there is something immensely satisfying about working on your own car, even if it is just an oil change. I'm going to place a list of all the tools I used with links down below. You don't have to use all these tools, but it certainly makes the job a lot easier. And if you want to do a good professional result, this is the kind of stuff you're going to want to have. So you're going to need a torque wrench. You're going to want an oil collection pan. Obviously some motor oil. I use Mobile One, fully synthetic. Some wheel ramps, an oil spill mat, that's really handy. The oil filter, of course. A filter removal tool, that makes your life a lot simpler than one of those strappy things. Some wheel chocks, an 8mm hex wrench socket, and the oil light reset tool. Now that one is important because you will not be able to get rid of the change your oil light on your dashboard without one of these tools. So that's it. The links are below to all these items and that is what I used in this video. First thing I'm going to do is get the car up on the ramps. Take your time with this. Position the ramps in line with your rear tyres. You need to do this on a flat surface. If your driveway slopes up or down like mine, do it in the garage or out on the street. If you're unsure, get someone to help you when backing up to tell you when to stop. Don't let the car idle for ages once you've got it on the ramps. Turn the engine off. You do not want the oil to become scalding hot. Once upon the ramps, put the handbrake on, put the car in park or in first gear, if it's a manual like mine, and put some wheel chocks under the front wheels. Make sure you have all your tools ready. You're going to need your socket wrench, you're going to need an 8mm hex socket and your oil pan. Put your protective gloves on and we're ready to go. Get the oil pan ready, loosen the sump plug to finger tight with the socket wrench. Check your oil pan is in place and unscrew the plug with your fingers. Be ready for the oil to come out really fast. There is a washer on the sump plug known as a crunch washer. It may have fallen off when you took the plug out. If you're not replacing the washer with a new one, you'll need to find this. Most oil pans come with a mesh on the top so you can easily dig out anything from the mesh that might have fallen in. 
let the oil drain out and this is probably the most time consuming part of the whole job. Mop up any spills you may have made whilst you're waiting. Once the oil is at a slow drip stage, it's time to remove the oil filter cover. The easiest way to do this is one of these. It's a filter remover that is the exact right size and has a half inch socket wrench hole so you can put your socket wrench to make it easier to move. Make sure your oil pan is aligned under the filter this time. Put the filter remover firmly onto the filter housing, insert your socket wrench and gently turn until finger tight. Remove your wrench out of the way and turn the rest of the filter cover by hand. Tip any oil from the casing into the collection pan. The old filter may still be in place. If it is, just gently wriggle it free. Let all the oil drain out. And while it's doing that, inspect the old filter. Have a look for any tiny shards or pieces of metal. Check between the folds of the filter. If you see any bits of metal or other debris, you should get the car into a mechanic to get it checked professionally. It could mean there's something going on inside your engine that you do not want to be waiting too long about. Get your new filter, push it up into place and you'll feel it click, almost click into place. And once it's there, it'll sit there without you having to hold it. The filter housing has an O-ring seal near the threads and your new filter will have come with a replacement. Remove the old ring filter taking note of where it sits actually on the filter casing. Roll the new O-ring into place. Open one of your new jugs of oil, dip your finger in and smear some new oil around the seal. Now you can screw your filter housing back into place. Do it up finger tight for now. Get your filter tool, place it back on your socket wrench and put it back over the filter casing. And now it's time to tighten. When you feel it start to get tight, just go a little further. You don't want to be putting all your strength into tightening this up. Do not over tighten it. You can use your torque wrench if you're unsure and you want to set it to the value that's coming up on the screen right now. So that is the value for your torque wrench for your filter casing, not the sump plug. So now it's time to get the 8mm hex socket. Set your torque wrench to 37 pounds per square feet coming up on the screen. So this is the setting for your torque wrench for your actual sump plug. Put the torque wrench onto your hex socket and put it up onto the sump plug and then turn. Turn the wrench until you hear the click. Once it's clicked, you'll know that that bolt has now been tightened to the correct amount, 37 pounds per square foot, as it is on my car. You're now set. You're now ready. It's time for the new oil. Make sure you position the oil pan under the sump plug and filter just in case anything leaks. There shouldn't be any, but just in case. Do a visual check on the two components just whilst you're under the car, just to make sure you can't see any new leaks forming. So we're up on the top now, open up the back and pop the top off the oil filler. Slowly pour about two liters, a gallon into the car, check for any leaks. So go back underneath, go and have a look. Get your torch out if you need to, or your flashlight. Give it a minute, just watch it, see if anything leaks. If there's no leaks, it's all good. You can pour the rest of the oil into the car. To make things easy on the second jug, what I do is get myself a permanent marker and I place a mark on the level indicator on the side of the jug, which is where it will be when you have used the correct amount of oil. So the first jug, all of that goes in. Now the second jug, like I said, if you place that marker with a permanent marker or a sharpie, you know that when you get to that point, you will have filled up the correct amount. So as you're pouring in the second jug, you can judge when you're approaching that, that marker. Pour a bit in, have a look, 
pour a bit in, have a look. I always stop just before it hits the marker and then check the oil. It's a lot easier to top up in small amounts than to have to drain oil out because you've overfilled it. Just go slow, go steady, and you'll get it. So at this point, I take the car off the ramps. You want the car on level ground when you do the oil check. Also, whilst it's fired up, you can have another quick visual to see if there's any leak because it's now under pressure. So have another visual with your torch or your flashlight just to see if there's any drips starting to form on either the filter casing or on the sump plug. Let's have a look at the oil level. Look at that, perfect, spot on. We now need to reset the oil change light on the dashboard and for that you need one of these. This is the iCarsoft multi-diagnostic tool and there's a link to this down below. It's really easy to use, just plug the cable in at this end and on the other end you have an ODBC connector that you need to plug into the ODBC port in the footwell. And there's the port. Now we select the car, Porsche 997 2008, turn the ignition on, yep it's already turned on. The lights go out on the dashboard and the tool says it's done, it really is that simple. So unplug the cable and you can now see that the oil service light is no longer coming up on the dashboard. There you have it, a step by step video of how to change the oil on your Porsche. It really is easy, you should give it a go. Just go slow and steady and you'll be fine. And of course it really does help to have the right equipment. Everything that I've used in this video is listed below. I would highly recommend whether you get these, these ones or other ones, I would highly recommend you do get yourself some of the right equipment. It makes this kind of thing so much easier. Right, okay, so hopefully you found this video useful. Please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Now it's time for a road test.